What's a sundial in the shade? What is an empty canvas if you cannot see in it a work of art? What is silence if you can't hear an unwritten song? What is a dream if it is only by night? The JN Tata Endowment was created to give the best and the brightest opportunities to learn, to unlearn, to use the energy of the mind to expand achievement in a wide and varied canvas of fields, to transcend ideas and patterns, and above all, to sow seeds from which a thousand flowers would bloom. More than a hundred years ago, Jamshedji Tata created the Jain Tata Endowment for Higher Education to lift up the best and most gifted so as to make them of the greatest service to the country. I prefer this constructive philanthropy which seeks to educate and develop the faculties of the best of our young men, he said. The brightest and the best have benefited from the trust in countless ways throughout their lives. Long after they finished their courses, they were able to change the course of their lives. They didn't measure themselves by what they had accomplished, but by what they could accomplish with their abilities. They knew that being gifted was not just a gift. A reflection from a few Jain Tata scholars says it all. I have very fond memories of being a JN Tata Endowment Scholar and when I applied for it, which was way back in 1958, asked to go for an interview with, in Bombay with Mrs. Uh, Piru Vesugar, who was looked upon as a very, shall we say, expressive and aggressive lady. Jamshed Irani and I were on the same uh, boat going to England, uh, both in JN Tata scholarships. Yeah. It took us uh, 22 days to go from Bombay to uh, Tilbury and we stopped at Aden and Port Suez and um, yeah. somewhere in Cyprus uh, we went to uh, oh, Marseille, uh, Marseille and Gibraltar finally England. During my academic career in Sheffield, there was one golden rule, which was that I had to write, whether I had any news or not, every month to Bombay House addressing the letter to Mrs. Vesuga. And I think uh, she had a secretary, I think his name was Narayan Swami, who would immediately send a reminder if we missed out that monthly letters. After I had finished my two years as a Tata scholar, I continued in Sheffield for a PhD degree with a scholarship which was from the university. She wrote to me saying that she puts up a report to Mr. J.R.D. Tata detailing the achievements or otherwise of our, the various Tata scholars on my file he had scribbled in the margin and I've got, still got a copy of that saying that if ever this young man returns to India ask him to first of all knock on the doors of the Tata Iron and Steel Company. I had the admission in hand at University Louis Pasteur Strasbourg and I said oh I've got to raise the funds well, I have a dream and I want to contribute towards a better world and I believe I can do that. There's something in me telling me to go there. The JN Tata's initial kickoff. I have gone from being a mother of two children 
with a job at Ecrisat as a research associate to being the founder of a company called Avestigen Limited. I noticed that they maintain a tremendous uh, interest and a desire to maintain a connection with all of the Tata scholars. So eventually, when I was uh, when I was finishing up my PhD, uh, I uh, it was kind of a natural progression, and I went to to meet Mr. Marigamala, and I, you know, I said, what, you know, I'm coming back to India. What should I do? Um, the, you know, the, the suggestion was why don't you try for the Tata Administrative Service? And so and I did that, and I, I got into the TAS and and. Uh, Spent in the next um, must have been ten or twelve years with Tatas uh, until I left and joined the World Bank. At the end of the day, the JN Tata Scholarship really helped boost my confidence. Importantly, when I did that program, it also helped me recognize I needed to develop more research skills. So I did a PhD and became a clinician scientist. That was a career I had not considered before. Uh, I was familiar with the with scholarship because my father uh, was uh, awarded that scholarship 24 years prior to my being awarded that. And I was actually delighted that I was going to follow in his footsteps. Uh, as a young man, I became quite comfortable going into executive offices of a large corporation like Tata. So that was the first boon of the scholarship, if you like. The interview process took a while, and then the indoctrination process took almost six months or more, I think. And we would be invited by Mrs. Vesugar to have tea with her. Mrs. Vesugar would watch how we handled the cups and the spoons and how we ate the pastries, and which at that time was quite meaningless to me. But when I first went to England, it said, I suddenly realized that we had a head start compared to some fellow Indians. The label of being a Tata scholar added a little bit of weight because 53, you must remember, wasn't that far after independence. So people would still look upon us as the folks from the colonies. So in Cambridge today, we, the other people thought either we, were, we came from a princely state and had endless bags of money or we were the down and outers and really not worth talking to. But when you said you were a Tata scholar, you, you, were, you were immediately placed in a special spot. In 1957, I was applying for Cambridge admissions and Fitzwilliam House, which was my father's college also in his time, and they offered me admission. And of course, the main issue then was how can I support myself. At that time, my father, he himself had been a Tata scholar. And more recently, one of my maternal uncles had also gone to Cambridge on a Tata scholarship. Although it was too late at that time to consider applications, but she would still like to interview me. That means uh, there was some possibility of getting help even though it was past their usual deadline. Uh, one of the reasons was that uh, I had a recommendation letter from uh, Radha Krishnan, the uh, Vice President of India at that time. I went to see Mrs. Vesugar and she gave me a very grilling <laughs> interview. He, she said that many Indian students who did well in India did not do well in Cambridge because they did not work hard enough. They were complacent. Then she came out with some statistics uh, that uh, uh, children of uh, good, successful Tata scholars had done badly. On the whole, she was more concerned about our not overspending the money that was granted. And uh, at the end of the year, I gave her my total expense sheet. So she was very pleased. And she started quoting my expense to other scholars who got very upset. <laughs> this man has lowered the level allowed. It was my misfortune that uh, Jayant Narlikar 
was uh, at Cambridge at the same time. And Nalika was ma managing well within that. And I was regularly, ex I was exceeding that, that figure. <laughs> she wanted me to bring down my standard of living. But it wasn't the standard of living. But if you're not part of Oxford social and cultural life, then you're really not getting out of uh, Oxford or Cambridge for that matter what they really have to offer. But I, I think uh, it was all in a friendly way, uh, even though it was uh, it's sometimes a little, what I would say, shaking. <laughs> So reality hits you when you realize that people have their own agendas for scholarships. Caste driven, it's religion driven, it's community driven. And then you start losing faith. When I suddenly heard from the JN Tata Endowment that uh, come for an interview, I was actually pleasantly surprised that because I told them very clearly, my life is not going to change. I'm not going to go back and make money or get into World Bank or do something like that. I'm going to be where I am. So it was very transparent. But despite the fact that they said that after hearing all this, they came back and told me that, well, we are going to give you possibly whatever maximum that the scholarship permits, driven by Vivekananda and his beliefs of giving back to the country. And the fact that he had met Tata and traveled with him to the US and he had asked him to set up an institution of science and he had said, how do you be a custodian of wealth and all these conversations which I had read in the writings of Vivekananda, somehow made me feel it was ordained that this, my doing something in the name of Vivekananda and the Tata scholarship coming through. A strong spirit of nationalism propelled Jamshedji Tata to invest in cotton mills, conceive the setting up of a steel plant, venture into hydropower, and build an iconic hotel. For him, Human capital was just as critical to the development of the country as setting up industries. He set aside a large amount of his personal wealth for an institute to promote original research in all branches of learning that is known as the Indian Institute of Science in Bengaluru. In 1892, he established the JN Tata Endowment among the first of its kind in the world with an objective to enable India's brightest and best to pursue higher studies abroad and realize their dreams. The commemorative coin, released in his honor by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, is a recognition of an extraordinary man with a far-reaching vision. The spark lit by the JN Tata Endowment Trust continues to ignite the minds of the brightest and the best. Tomorrow begins today for the new batch of JN Tata scholars, bringing their talents and abilities to the fulfillment of their hopes, dreams and aspirations. The founder's legacy lives on.